Welcome back to Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. And a big thank you to my patrons on Patreon for your contributions to my channel. In the past few videos, we've been looking at the cranial nerves that specifically control the extrinsic eye muscles, and we've seen two of them. The first was the oculomotor nerve, cranial nerve 3, which is by far of the three the most complicated. And you can see here that it innervates these four middle muscles. Those are medial rectus, superior rectus, inferior rectus, and inferior oblique. There's also another one called levator palpebrae superioris, which is not an extrinsic eye muscle, but it does elevate the eyelid. In the previous video, we looked at the trochlear nerve, cranial nerve 4. That one only innervates one muscle, and it's the superior oblique. And the trochlear nerve was obviously a lot more simplistic and easier to understand than the ocular motor nerve. The abducent nerve, cranial nerve 6, is also fairly simple to understand because it also only innervates one muscle. We skip the trigeminal nerve, cranial nerve 5. We will pick up with that in the next video, so make sure to take a look at that if you're interested. All right, the abducens or abducent nerve. Sometimes you'll see it written as abducens. Sometimes you'll see it written as abducent. They are the same thing. They are cranial nerve 6. And the muscle that it controls is the lateral rectus muscle. So here's your lateral rectus muscle. Here's a better view of it on this picture right here. Here's the eyeball, and then right there on the left side of that eyeball is your lateral rectus muscle. Now the job of this muscle is to move the eye laterally. And to really understand this and why the nerve is named the way it is, we're going to do a little exercise. So I want you to think about your right eye. Forget your left for a second. Just imagine your right eye. And I want you to, without moving your head, look to your right. Okay. Now your left eye moved medially, right? But your right eye, when you looked right, moved laterally. Your line of vision for your right eye, did it move towards your midline or away from the midline? Well, your right eye, when you look to the right, the line of vision went away from the midline. What do we call a movement away from the midline? Abduction. So when the eye is moved laterally, we can also call that abduction of the eye. Conversely, we can also say medial movement of the eye is adduction or adduction of the eye. So when the eye moves laterally, the line of vision moves away from the midline, so lateral eye movement is also eye abduction. Conversely, medial eye movement would be eye adduction or adduction. Okay? So because the lateral rectus muscle abducts the eye, the nerve is named the abducent or the abducens nerve. Okay? Now let's take a look at the pathway for cranial nerve 6, the abducens nerve. Now, as compared to the oculomotor nerve and trochlear nerve, there's one major difference right at the start. Can you spot what it is? Well, remember that the oculomotor nerve and trochlear nerves, cranial nerves 3 and 4, originate in the midbrain. Those are the only two cranial nerves to originate in the midbrain. Cranial nerves 5 through 8, certainly 6 is included in that, originate in the pons. So now we're moving down the brain stem into the pons. Okay? So right here in the pons, this is your abducent or abducens nucleus. This is the origin of that abducens nerve. We follow the abducens nerve. It exits the pons anteriorly. And we see it's going to go over or superior to the anterior inferior cerebellar artery. So it moves over that. And then it goes to the cavernous sinus. This is a tunnel within the sphenoid bone. And so it's going to enter the cavernous sinus, move through it, and then exit the cavernous sinus. Now, that's something similar to what we saw with the oculomotor and trochlear nerves. Okay? Both of those also enter the cavernous sinus, move through it, and exit it. Okay? And then they're both also going to exit the cranium through the superior orbital fissure. The superior orbital fissure is a hole in the sphenoid bone that allows structures to move through it and enter the orbit where the eye is. And this is no different. The abducent nerve is going to exit the cavernous sinus, move through the superior orbital fissure, so exiting the cranium and moving into the orbit. And there you can see it's going to move to the lateral rectus muscle where it innervates that muscle. And through contraction of the lateral rectus muscle, we get abduction of the eye or movement of the eye laterally. 
So hopefully this video gave you some good information about the abducens nerve and the lateral rectus muscle. Thanks for tuning in. Please like, subscribe, and check out my Instagram for cool science and not science stuff.